We are ninjas, we are brothers, we're united and we're strong. We are ninjas, we are turtles, we are heroes, sing our song. Are you ready? The Legend of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Part 1, Chapter 29, Assault. Written and performed by Joseph Chambers and based on the original Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle comic books created by Kevin Eastman and Peter Laird. The warthog turned to the rhino and whispered, Get them green fellas, but no one else. The rhino then charged at the three turtles. Within only four seconds, Leo and Mikey had hauled Raph onto their shoulders and were attempting to run with him. His limp body sagging and dragging all the way and leaving a harsh trail of grungy green-blue glow gushing behind them. They got about ten metres from the main door before the rhino mutant had caught up with them and knocked Michelangelo to the floor with his giant hard-as-shovel hands. Michelangelo screamed in terror as the rhino attempted to headbutt him with two sharp and vicious looking horns. A deadly and manic grimace punctuated his face. Michelangelo skillfully rolled from side to side attempting to dodge the deadly horns. Wherever a horn of the beast missed Michelangelo it punched a hole and several large cracks in the concrete floor. Michelangelo did not fancy his chances of healing from one of them and hoped one of his brothers would intervene shortly before he missed a beat and became as good as dead. He was also having trouble whacking away the large chunks of flooring with his nunchaku that were landing on him from the assault the rhino was having on the concrete beneath him. He was screaming so loud it was as if he was trying to alert the entire planet to his current predicament. Meanwhile, the warthog patiently waited for an opening to fire his laser blaster at the turtle. He had a pretty clear shot, but there was a risk of shooting his rhino friend. If there was even a 1% chance of hurting the beast, he would not take it. Then, without fail, a green figure of brash boldness attached itself to the rhino and attempted to attack the creature. Leave him alone! Leonardo yelled from atop the rhino. The rhino seemed to know a weapon when he saw it and grabbed both swords from Leonardo, snapping them in half with great ease before hurling them across the warehouse into the mass of fighting ninjas. The warthog now turned its attention to the green figure wrestling his friend, but still did not fire. Instead, he decided to fire at Donatello, who seemed to be too busy holding off about 20 ninjas at the other end of the warehouse to notice that there was a large warthog with a gun about to kill him. His blaster made a large whipping sound followed by a tearing noise, a ding and then a crunch. The device proceeded to crumble into several parts in his hands. These parts seemed to be smoking hot from the laser and so the warthog dropped these with a surprised yelp and the pieces slowly turned to a sort of molten ash on the ground. The warthog then yelled something that sounded oddly like Starkman, that son of a glitch said the ducky gun was ready! Leonardo tried to headlock the monster. It roared further and attempted to elbow Leonardo in the face. Leonardo rolled forward off the monster and it lunged at him with immense strength. Leonardo then stuck his finger below and just behind the rhino's ear. After a few seconds of writhing, the rhino fell to the floor and seemed reluctant to get up again. Leonardo and Michelangelo grabbed Raphael off the floor once again and ran straight out of the building to safety. The warthog and the remaining ninjas proving to be too slow to follow them. Leonardo kicked down part of the somehow no longer electrified fence and with Michelangelo got Raphael to an adequate distance. They hid behind a large bush for a few seconds before deciding they were indeed safe. I need to get back in there, Michelangelo protested. He was petrified more than he had ever been in his life. Not just because he had nearly died, but because Donatello was still in grave danger and Raphael was, in his mind, at death's door. Donatello can manage. We need to worry about Raphael, Leonardo said. You need to worry about Raphael. I'm going back in there, Michelangelo demanded. No, you're not. There is nothing you can do. You will just be putting yourself at risk, Leonardo pleaded. You try to stop me, 
So, Leonardo, remembering his father's words, did just that. Leonardo grabbed Michelangelo and swung him by the arm while slipping his leg out so he had no chance to balance himself. Michelangelo fell onto the ground and with his eyes showed more fear than he ever had for Leonardo before. But at least he was not going to run back in there and make an already disastrous mission far messier than it needed to be. Leonardo decided it would be best to gather April to get help with Raphael as she had previously mentioned her mum was a surgeon and there was a chance she would know how to treat Raphael's wound better than he could. April had kept herself busy for the past 20 minutes or so trying to get the guards as far away as possible from the turtles and had managed to trap one in a public toilet cubicle where he had been forced to use one after being caught short. She had waited until she was sure he was very much in the middle of what he was doing and then forced a pen's lid she had in her pocket into the locking mechanism, forcing it to seize up and remain locked. It was at this point she had received a buzzing sensation in her pocket and noticed that Leonardo had sent her an attachment showing exactly where he was with the message, you are needed. She had arrived as soon as possible and was horrified by what state Raphael was in. April then instructed Leonardo on how to apply pressure and staunch the blood. April was rather panic-stricken, but was able to act quickly in suggesting that Leonardo could cauterise the arteries and try to stitch up the wound. April snapped a couple of branches off a nearby tree and Leo used a box of matches from his belt to light them. He then applied oil, also in a small vial from his belt, to one of Raph's sighs, warmed up the blade and burnt the artery carefully back together as per April's instructions. She was 50% sure they were from something her mum had said and 50% sure they were from a medieval medicine documentary. They both hoped Raphael did not wake up during all this as he would be in an immeasurable amount of pain and they had no method to numb it. He then got a needle and Fred and began to stitch up the wound. Just as well he always had basic medical supplies in his belt and April had a good grasp on the workings of the body. Leo stopped for a second and looked over his shoulder. He could have sworn he had seen something, just for a second. A flash of movement, a dark, dark shadow. He allowed his eyes to move back to Raphael and let himself concentrate, convinced his mind was overreacting. 